In November of 1988, when I was seven years young, one of the best ever Harlequin miniatures was released, the Harlequin Jet Bike. The Harlequin Jet Bike was a metal miniature and therefore was released in a blister pack. This blister pack would cost you £2.50 per jet bike, which I think is an absolute bargain for such a wonderful miniature. Now normally I can tell you who sculpted the miniature, but sadly I can't find that information in any of my old hammer reference material. So if any of you guys know, please don't hesitate to let us know in the comments below. I'm Marcel, and this is Snakeworks. Right, so normally I can tell you the ordering code for these miniatures, but this time I can't find it anywhere. If I was to dig around into some old magazines, I might be able to find it for you. But do you guys care about the old ordering codes anyway? Being of Eldar design, Jet bikes tend to be much more reliable than other vehicles used by Harlequins. A Harlequin jet bike is usually equipped with a targeter, hollow field and forward firing shuriken cannon. Now when it comes to the miniature itself, I like to begin by looking at the face, much like with people. And this jet bike rider does indeed have a face even though it's covered by a metallic mask of sorts, a bit like Phantom of the Opera. Sadly, the sculpt appears to be quite busy in the face area, and I'm having a hard time reading the details, and thus it's hard to figure out. I feel I might need to get one of these in the flesh for a better look, and perhaps to paint. Another one for the pile of shame. The Harlequin jet bike rider himself is equipped with a fantastic looking sword. In the promotional artwork, he's pointing the sword forwards in his direction of travel, but on the miniature, it's pointed straight up. I bet you didn't think I would notice that. Now I wonder why that is. Is it for sculpting or casting reasons perhaps? Who knows, I'm betting it's casting reasons unless he's trying to poke something in the sky. But I doubt it. So word on the street is that miniature poses were dictated by the casting methods of the time. I think that's why a lot of them are in that sort of 2D cardboard cutout style pose. Amusingly, we called my old manager cardboard cutout, as he appeared to do, full too. Our Harlequin rider has an absolutely huge mohawk, and I'm quite jealous. I'm not sure I could pull that off myself. By the way, I've since had my hair shaved off. I finally managed to get some time to visit the hairdresser. Mohawks were a huge cultural icon back in the 80s with the punk movement, and you used to see them in the media all the time. There are a lot of them in the 1980s and early 90s beat-em-up games like Streets of Rage and Final Fight. Great stuff. And sadly, they don't seem to be around as much anymore. Mohawks, however, do look very high maintenance, even more than my man bun. Have any of you guys ever had a mohawk, and was it hard to maintain? So this jet bike isn't a completely new sculpt. It's based on the previous Eldar jet bike miniature, which was also released in metal, obviously. They have, however, changed the fairing sculpt. More on that in a moment. And they've swapped the standard Eldar rider out for a Harlequin, which would make sense being that it's for Harlequins. So nowadays this sort of thing happens with plastic kits. They give you options to add different things on to the base kit. I think they call them dual build or something like that. When it comes to the dual builds, I always find that one of them always looks a hundred times better than the other blatantly obviously just cobbled together at the last minute idea. Unlike Lego sets. When I see uh, Technic Lego sets in the shop, I always turn them around and have a look at the alternative option on the back. And I always find the alternative option always looks better to me. Which is strange. Anyway, speaking of Lego, I have here 
a LEGO Speed Champions Fast and Furious Nissan Skyline GTR, which has nothing to do with Warhammer, except if you turn it around, it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Jake. If you are enjoying the content on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. <coughs> do apologize for my cough. I think I'm dying of some sort of virus again. It better not be that herp and the back. Now we can't have a little chat about this Harlequin jet bike without mentioning that massive gurning face on the front fairing, can we? It's absolutely amazing. Do you think they were inspired by the truck from Maximum Overdrive with that big green face on? I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Is it any good? I always get it confused with Jewel, another truck movie. I feel I might need to go and watch those two now. I like to imagine the teeth are the intake grill of the jet bike. You know, like the intake of a jet engine or something. I don't know if Eldar jet bikes have any sort of intakes, but it looks like it. Thinking about it, they probably don't, but oh well. Also, the ears, as it were, have these teeny tiny little dots in them that look like they might discharge something. Smoke, perhaps? Or maybe even music. I wonder what Eldar music sounds like. Any ideas, anybody? Ah, such a lovely bike. If you want to see some more Old Hammer videos, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. As always, thank you very much for watching, and always remember to drill your barrels.